Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kirsten from Words and Whimsy, and today I'm going to show you how to make really awesome digital mock ups for your shop. They're going to look something like this, and maybe a little of this really awesome really easy so i actually posted a quick two-part tutorial on TikTok, and as of today it's garnered almost 30,000 views and i've had quite a few people ask me to slow it down make a full length video so that's what i'm going to be doing today so grab your shirts grab your phone and let's go Alright, I brought you out on my back porch for a very specific reason. So before we start taking pictures of anything, I want to just talk to you briefly about lighting. I like to shoot in natural diffused light. Now this is where I shoot. This is my back porch. So as you can tell, the sun is not shining directly on me. This is where I'm going to be shooting. So it's really important when you're taking pictures. You can do this with your phone, you can do it with a fancy camera, it really doesn't matter. But you want to make sure that you have natural light and it's soft, diffused light. If you don't have a covered back porch area, another option is to open your front door when the sun isn't shining directly in your front door and just lay your articles of clothing right on the floor inside the front door so it's diffused light. The, the ceiling of your entryway is gonna act as a natural diffuser. You can also hang like a white sheer curtain over your window and use that as a diffuser. There's a lot of different options, but I prefer natural light. I prefer diffused light. It just makes the colors more natural. And when you are taking pictures of clothes that you're eventually gonna put on your website, you want the colors to be as true to accurate as possible. So that's why natural light is really, really important. You're not gonna do a ton of crazy editing. You're not gonna use a whole bunch of filters. These aren't gonna be like super stylized photos for social media. You're gonna make the graphics for social media, but the pictures need to be as accurate to true color as possible. So I'm gonna show you what I do with a shirt. Now, I typically do what I call four poses for each shirt and here's how I shoot them. So I always start with just a flat lay. Now the grid option is on and you can see that there. And when you turn it sideways to lay flat, you'll see the cross come up. So there's the yellow and the white X. And when you line those up, that means your phone is level. So I like to shoot this way and I just, I just line it up till it's level snap a picture. Now we can see what that looks like. We'll have to flip it around and do a little bit of editing, but it's pretty much the picture. Now I'm going to explain a little bit more after we take some pictures and do some editing. I'm going to talk to you about the whole background situation, but just to get you started, it really doesn't matter what your background looks like because we're going to take it out in Canva. So the way that I do my digital mock-ups is I shoot first, I edit the pictures, and then I pop into my computer and we're going to do a little bit more editing within Canva to remove the background, add some layers, add all kinds of colors, all kinds of fun stuff. So you have to start here. So natural diffuse light, flat lay, doesn't really matter what the background looks like, just get a nice picture of your shirt. Okay, so this is pose one. It's the nice flat picture. The next one that I do is I just kind of mess it up at the bottom and a little bit at the sleeves just so it's not so perfectly flat. It looks like somebody kind of threw it down on the bed or what have you. It's just a little more natural. But I do like to leave the chest area as flat as possible because that's where the artwork for the shirt is gonna go. And if there's fewer wrinkles, it just makes it a whole lot easier to do that as an overlay in Canva. So again, I just kind of mess up the bottom, mess up the sleeves a little bit, leave the chest area nice and flat. So we've got the grid function on, we've got the cross, line that up, take a picture. Pretty simple. The third pose I like to do is to tie a little knot inside. Keep the chest area nice and flat as much as possible. You can cuff the sleeves if you want to. I, I do that a lot when I'm shooting my Comfort Colors t-shirts. I'll cuff the sleeves. But this is just a nice option to, to use in your social media graphics. So this will be our third picture. Line up that grid, snap a picture. 
And the last one I usually do is what I call a tucked in. So if I'm pairing it with a graphic uh, picture of shorts or pants or something like that, I kind of squish it up in the middle where the waistline would be so it looks a little tucked in. I don't use this one often, but sometimes I do. So again, grid function on, line up the yellow and whites uh, cross and snap a picture. All right, so we've got all of our photos of our shirt and you do that for every shirt that you need to photograph. And then we're gonna pop into our phone on Lightroom Mobile and do a little bit of editing. So if you don't have Lightroom Mobile, this is a free app that you can download. You do not have to pay for it. And I'll show you exactly what that looks like. So when you open it up, you can see I've already got some pictures of shirts in here that I've taken. And you just add from your camera roll one picture at a time, okay? So we know that we're gonna rotate this photo and you can even go ahead and crop it a little bit if you want to. And then we're just gonna do a little bit of light editing. So I'm gonna link in the description to where I get my presets, but there are a lot of free ones that you can find online. Um, I personally like a few from Light and Airy Photography and I'll link to that below. Um, I'm not affiliated with them anyway, in any way, but I love their presets. And for these kinds of photos where I want the color of the shirt to match, the color of the shirt as accurately as possible. I don't do much with presets, but I do look at a few of them that just kind of brighten the color up just a touch, but I don't want it to be unnatural. So there's one called RC Half Power that does really, really well, and I'm just gonna save that. So I like to use the same preset for all of my photos so that they're all exactly the same. All right, so we've got all of our photos edited in Lightroom Mobile, and the next step is to head back inside onto our computer so we can airdrop these to ourselves and then hop into Canva and do the rest. All right, so we've got our edited photos. We're about to pop those into Canva, but before we can do that, we have to get them off our phone. So if you have an iPhone, you can just select each of these photos. Just hold it down for just a second and you'll see the blue check marks pop up, and then you go to share. And you can either export to your camera roll first and then send them to your computer or you can just share too. And it's gonna render the photos, save all the data, and then give you the option to airdrop to yourself. There we go. So now they're on my computer and I'm gonna pop into Canva and screen share with you and show you the next steps. Okay, here are the photos that we airdropped to ourselves and we're gonna pop these into Canva. So usually when I'm doing a mock-up, I use an Instagram post. I like to have the square graphics and you can resize these, you know, vertically or horizontally, but I usually like to just start with a square. So we're just gonna upload these pictures and you can put them right here or you can create a folder for them. You can see I've already got some photos in here, so we're gonna use those. So once you upload these, you just drag and drop them from your computer into Canva and they'll populate. And once they're in here, you just click on your photo. And I go ahead and stretch mine out a little bit. And so you can see in this picture, there's the rug that we just were using. There's my foot. So we want to get all of that background out. So you're going to click here for effects and select background remover. And sometimes it's pretty quick. Other times it takes a few seconds. So just wait until it's finished and then you can move on to the next step. Okay, so as you can see, it took the entire background out and it left us with just the shirt. Now I do wanna point out a couple of things on the left-hand side where it says select a brush. Sometimes when it removes the background, it does so imperfectly. There might be a little bit of the background still showing, in which case you would select the erase tool and you'll be able to erase part of the shirt, okay? If it erases too much, for example, let's zoom in just a little bit on this shirt. Let's say, you know, it accidentally removed that when it took the background out. We can click the restore brush and we can click back on there and it restores it. So again, you would want to erase this part and you can change the brush size to whatever you need and you just make some small clicks and you can remove anything that you need to remove. So I'm just going to Command Z out of all of that to restore it to the way that it was. And we are gonna click done. We're gonna zoom back out so you can see the full thing. So there is our shirt with no background. 
I'm going to crop it just a little bit to get the excess white space out of it because we really don't need that. And then I'm going to stretch it to fit my square. And the last thing that I do is name it and save it to my computer. So first we're going to click right here and apply. So there's our photo, right? And we're going to go up here. Now I like to name my shirts the brand, style number, and color. So this is a Bella Canvas 3001 CVC and it is Heather Prism Peach. We're going to save it. Now when you save that, you'll see up here sometimes it'll be ready to go and say all changes saved. Sometimes it'll say saving paused. If you see that, you just need to wait a minute because that means that it's still in the background making sure that it is a transparent background in the background of Canva. So you just go file, save, and then you can download and you want to download it as a PNG file type and you want to check the box next to transparent background and then you can download it. And there it is. So we're going to open this up. And we're just going to double click on this photo so you can see exactly what it looks like. So there's our photo, Heather Prism Peach. It's got a transparent background. We're ready to go. So now it's, so you're just going to repeat that process for every single photo that you have, all of your shirt photos, and you're going to remove all of the backgrounds. When you're completely finished with that, what I like to do is take the photo that we edited that has the transparent background and upload that back to Canva. Now, a quick little note, we could have left it the way that it was without downloading it to our computer, but two reasons that I save it to my computer, one is so that I can use it over and over again and not have to remove the background every single time. And the other is Canva can sometimes be a little glitchy and when you start adding different layers to your graphics, it might, it might bring the background of the photo back into the picture and it just becomes a hassle. So for me, it's easier to save it as a PNG with a transparent background to my computer and that way I can re-upload it to Canva, use it over and over again. I don't have to worry about the background showing up anywhere and it, it's just a whole lot easier. So this is a digital mock-up now. We have a digital mock-up of one of the shirts that it's going to be in the shop and we can do whatever we want to with it. Now to use this with your artwork, you're going to need to also have a PNG file with a transparent background of your actual artwork. So I have all of mine saved in a folder in Canva called Supercolor Art. So here's all of my artwork and then I have some folders for artwork here. So I'm gonna make this shirt today. This is one of my new designs. If the oceans roar your greatness, so will I and I'm going to use this on my shirt. And so all I do is resize it to where it's a, it looks about the same size as what it will be when it's actually pressed on the shirt. This you kind of have to eyeball, but you definitely don't want it to be like this on your t-shirt because that's not how big the design is going to be. And you don't want it to be super small either. The goal is to give your customers an accurate representation of what the shirt's going to look like when they receive it in the mail. So this is a pretty accurate representation. That's actually probably a little too big. I'll move that a little smaller. There we go. Okay, so there is a mock-up of a t-shirt that's, that's coming to my shop. So you can save this as is. You can download this with a transparent background if you want to or with the white background. If you want to get a little more artsy, we can do that too. So let's add a page and we're going to go back to our mock-ups. I'm going to show you some of the other ones that I have. So here are some Bella Canvas mock-ups that I already have made. There's the one with the knot that I like so much. So let's do a different artwork for that one. We're going to do the lake life design. So I'm just going to size the design down to where it's about the size that it will be on the shirt. And we're going to position it where it needs to go. And then before we make it too big, what I like to do is select both. So I'm just going to grab, I'm going to click out of my photo and then I'm going to right, I'm going to left click on my mouse, grab the shirt and the design, see the two boxes there. And when they're selected, you can go to the top here and click group. And now it's one layer. So when you resize the shirt, the design comes with it. it makes it a whole lot easier to create other mockups. Okay. So we're going to rotate this just a touch. And I'm going to change my background. I'm going to add, I'm going to make it a full outfit flat lay. Now, a lot of the things that I'm going to show you today are inside of the Whimsy Mocks 
Etsy shop. So if you need bottoms or shoes or other shirts that are already done for you, you can shop that and there's a link down below for you to do that. So we're going to go here and we're going to find some shorts that look really cute with this. I think I'm going to do the distressed black. So we're just going to resize these a little bit so that it matches the size of the shirt. And I'm going to go up here to position and move it backwards so the shirt's laying on top of the shorts. So we can just play around with this outfit until it gets to the way we want it to look. Rotate things, all that good stuff. I'm going to move it to the middle. And then I'm going to go back over here and grab some shoes. I think we'll just do, we'll do the pink flip flops today. We'll just kind of put those off to the side there. Might even put them, eh, we'll put them a little to the side. Okay, so that, there's an outfit. Now, that's nice, but I want to dress it up a little bit. So I'm going to click the background and go to this little background color box here. And I want it to match the branding in my shop. So I'm going to click some colors and play around with what that looks like. And then I like to go to elements and there's a ton of stuff here, but my favorite thing to use is pattern. So when you click on pattern, there's a ton of stuff here. You can be specific if there's a certain kind of pattern you want. And there are examples here, line, flower, abstract, etc. So you can click on any of those. I just like to see what's available. So I'm going to click on one of these. Actually, this one looks, let's see. I want something that looks kind of beachy, lake life, whatever. That one looks like water to me. That's more floral, but it kinda, we can make it look like water. So I'm going to stretch it all the way across my image. I'm going to change the color. Let's do this dark color. And we're going to go to position and move it all the way to the back so it's behind everything else. And then I'm going to click on the transparency and make it just where it's kind of barely there. So see how that looks? That's a nice graphic that we can use on social media. So we have our own digital mock-up. The nice thing about this is we don't have to go out and set up our camera and get a bunch of clothes and shoes and do a shirt press with the design on it and all of that stuff. We can just make a mock-up of a blank shirt, add our artwork, and then we can create endless amounts of graphics using that same mock-up. So it's really easy and it's extremely versatile and useful. So I use these on social media. I use these in email marketing. I even use them on my website. So when you go to my shop, wordsandwhimsyshop.com, you'll see that these are all transparent backgrounds. So these are all mock-ups. These are not actual shirts that I laid on top of each other. These are background, transparent background PNG files that I made in Canva, added the artwork over them, and I just made the overlays like this for my website. So here's a great example. When you click into any particular item, you see the shirt itself, there's an outfit, and there's a close-up. So these are all done in Canva with a digital mock-up that I created using the same method that I just showed you. So there's a lot of versatility to this um, and hopefully that will help you kind of step up your branded social media graphics a little bit and allow you to do sneak peeks and first looks and all of those things with the artwork that you are bringing to your shop. So hope that was easy. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if there's any other tutorials that you wanna see. And you can check out Words and Whimsy with the link in the description as well as the Whimsy Mox Etsy shop. The Whimsy Mox Etsy shop is already filled with a bunch of different graphics that you can use. These are all shirts with transparent backgrounds. There will not be a logo on them. There are also pants and shoes and all kinds of fun stuff. So make sure you head over to the Whimsy Mox Etsy shop, grab what you need, and make some really fun graphics.